Hey guys, it's Doug Holt here with Author of Your Own Story and this is your Daily Growth Hack. So here I am out on a five day exhibition with my family. We decided to get out of Dodge and go explore the wilderness of Eastern Oregon and we're having a great time. So what I've asked the, the team to do is put together a mashup of some of the best listener uh, requests that we've had for Author of Your Own Story with the over 100 uh, daily growth hacks we have. So I hope you enjoy over these next couple days. We're gonna revisit these older daily growth hacks so you can go ahead and go back. If you haven't heard them, go back and do the work and get a chance to actually listen to them. And remember, go back and listen to the whole library while it's still available. Now, if you have heard these before, don't worry. Doing the work again, you're, you've changed, so you're gonna have a different outlook on each of these daily growth hacks. That's it for me. I'm out living the author of my own story lifestyle, and I hope you're doing the same. Today I'm going to talk to you about relationships and what does that have to do with mowing the lawn? Well, I was just talking to a client of mine, an extremely intelligent, successful man. And he was talking to me like, eh, yeah, my girl, you know, she's just nagging me to go mow the lawn. And so I asked him, like, well, why aren't you? I'm just curious. It's like, I'm just being lazy. So we started talking about other things and you know, you pick up on these patterns when you're coaching for a long time. But we started talking about the rest of his life. And what we were talking about was him working on his house, his business, then what he was doing with his meditation practice. Always his answer is, ah, I'm just being lazy. See, he had built a successful business and he built it to a point that allowed him not to work if he didn't want to. That's fantastic, that's great. It's something that I worked on with him to get there. But now he's being lazy. We'll call this guy um, Ken. So I was like, all right, Ken, so why aren't you mowing the grass? I'm just being lazy. Okay, so break it down for me. What happened? Like, how does the grass come up? Ah, oh, my girl, she's always telling me, you know, go mow the grass. And the next day it's, you know, hey, the grass is looking really bad. You know, I, you know, I drove by, our neighbors are gonna start complaining. And I'm always telling her, I'll do it tomorrow. Or, oh yeah, I got that, I'll do it today later. Or, oh, the weather's not that great, I'll get to it. It had nothing to do with the grass. Really, it had to do with his what he felt was his manhood as we broke it down. Now, he didn't see this. Mowing the grass would take him 20 minutes. He can listen to a podcast like this, multiple ones, get great insights and ideas while mowing the grass, or just spend time enjoying the moment of mowing the grass. It wouldn't have taken him much time. He doesn't have anything on his schedule. The real reason is he was really saying F you to his girl. He was saying, don't tell me what to do. I'm the man, I'll tell you what to do. You see, he was a coward. He was too scared to say that to her face, so what he did is say, yeah, yeah, I'll get to it. Oh yeah, I'll do it tomorrow, I'll do it the next day. And after several weeks, you know, she felt bad, I assume, after keep asking him to do this basic thing for their family, just go mow the lawn. She was being the breadwinner, she was taking care of the kids, he was just laying on the couch, being lazy. But the reality of it is he didn't feel man enough because of other things that were going on in his life. And then when she asked him to please go mow the lawn, he took it as her telling him what to do and taking away his power. You see, in relationships, there can often be a power struggle, especially at what we call a level one relationship. Now, some people call it a level four. It really depends on what you want to do. But anyway, the bottom of the barrel relationships where it's really horse trading, or it's like, you do this for me, I'll do this for you. That's not a relationship, that's not love. That's a commerce. That's, I give you money, you give me my taco, my car, whatever. I tell you the story because in relationships, oftentimes the things that upset us aren't the things that we're seeing. They're stories that we're creating on the outside. So what I want you to think about are where are these things happening in your relationship? Where in your relationship is a boss, coworker, spouse, uh, sibling, asking you to mow the lawn, and really you're saying F you in a passive aggressive way. Look deep because it's happening. We have things coming at us at all the time. So we have text messages, phone calls, emails, you know, the TV's on, the radio's on. We're always constantly being stimulated. And oftentimes that affects our communication. And the reason it affects our communication is oftentimes things are said and misinterpreted. Now this can happen by text messages or chats often because you can't hear the, 
the emotion that somebody's is sending through. You can really misinterpret that. But even talking one-on-one, -on -one, you can misinterpret the intention of something that somebody says in our uh, busy lifestyle. Let me give you an example. You know, maybe I came home from work and I just noticed that the kitchen counter was just messy. And I might have said, geez, the kitchen's so messy. And then she might have replied right away, taking offense, thinking I was attacking her, saying, well, gosh, I'm working all day too. You could do something. And then that would escalate. Hey, that's not what I meant. But by saying that's not what I meant, does that ever really help? No. No one just stops and goes, oh, that's not what you meant. Well, geez, please tell me. And it doesn't work that way. Emotions start to escalate. They go kind of up an escalation ladder. Now, backing into that, she would ask for an apology. Yeah, she apologized to me. Well, I'm not apologizing, I would say. You know, I didn't say anything wrong. You know, you're just being sensitive, which is always, guys, the worst thing to say, right? But back then, I just wasn't as clear. I'd be like, look, I'm not apologizing. I wasn't wrong in this situation. I just simply made an observation that the counter is a mess and you took it the wrong way. That's your fault, your problem. You know, I kind of was a jerk, I guess, because I didn't know any better back then. But what I came to understand is what I really was sorry for was the way that she felt. I never wanted to hurt her feelings. I, you know, I love and cherish my wife. I want her to always be happy. So what I've learned to do over time is apologize for the way the other person feels, the way that my words landed. So that I own that responsibility between the communication, between what comes out of my mouth and how it lands in that other person's brain. And so what I would say now is, geez, I'm so sorry I hurt your feelings. I, I didn't mean that at all and I love and cherish you. So let me explain what I'm trying to say. When I say that, I've taken ownership. I've apologized for hurting her feelings. And now her defenses go down, right? Her defenses go down because so she can relax and actually receive what I'm about to say. So what I've learned to do is take responsibility of my words and how they land on the other people. Now, this doesn't mean lying or apologizing for what I say. You know, sometimes I do if I say something wrong, of course, but oftentimes it's like, hey, I'm sorry that didn't land properly. Let me try this again. I really respect you. And I really want you to understand where I'm coming from. And I wanna understand where you're coming from and make sure you feel heard. What I want you to do is, is list maybe the top five most important relationships in your life right now. And what I want you to journal about is where in those top five have you had conflicts? And maybe, or you've had conflicts where you don't feel fully understood or heard. And what I want you to do is reach out to those people. Reach out to each of these people and then I want you to listen. I want you to fully hear them. I was at the gym this morning working out and there were two guys talking. One guy turned to his friend and started correcting his form. Now, I had just met these guys a few days later and the instinct to jump in and tell him that his advice was wrong was really high in me. I mean, I really had to fight it. You see, I've spent over two decades in the fitness field and acquired over 18 degrees and certifications and have been teaching fitness to people as well as to fitness professionals for a very long time. So that innate uh, nature inside of me just to, to correct them and give them the right information was going so strong. And it made me start to think, what is the outcome that I want? You see, I had just met these guys and they're both really nice. And I could have stepped in and said, hey, look, you know, the advice you're giving is really bad. You know, this person might actually even hurt themselves and embarrassed his friend. But I could tell that he was actually really enjoying helping his buddy out. And really what I would have done is just push them both away. So I sat back and relaxed and just simply had conversations with them. And what this made me realize is, you know, as little as three years ago, my need to be right was so strong within me that it actually shattered relationships around me. I did this in relationships, friendships, but also in my marriage. Now it could have been doing the dishes. You see, I was brought up a certain way that when you did dishes, you had them so sparkling clean even before you put them in the dishwasher. And I would correct my wife. I would go over and say, no, 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 you're not doing this right. And talk to her. Taking out the trash, no, 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 we actually, we are gonna sort it a certain way. There was my way, the right way in my relationships. What I found is it caused so much strife between my wife and I, between my friendships. I constantly felt that I needed to correct people. This could have been on news stories, politics, when I'd hear people disseminating information that was just blatantly incorrect. But see, I had a shift. I had a shift where I decided, what is my outcome in this situation? You know, in a conversation, I don't have to be right. And oftentimes I probably am not. But there's a gray area. If it's a relationship conversation, I can choose to be happy. Sit back, relax, and have that conversation. Now I see this a lot within my own family when they're talking about politics. You have people on the left and you have people on the right. And sometimes they just don't agree. 
and they end up really driving each other apart and not enjoying each other, in fact, disliking the other person based on opposing views. Now, I'm gonna give you the opportunity here or the paradigm shift that you have the possibility of choosing to be happy in these situations. And I can tell you from my own experience in relationships, when I've made this shift from wanting to be right versus wanting to be happy, it has made me such a happier person. It's opened me up to new relationships and my relationship with my wife has never been better. So I'm gonna ask you this today. Where across your five to thrive, but especially in your relationships, are you striving to be right? Are you striving to be right with a coworker? Are you striving to be right with a friend? Are you striving to be right about politics? Is it about sporting events? My team's better than yours. Where are you stuck in the black and white situation of being right versus being happy? And where is this creating unhappiness in your life? Take action in this moment of clarity to choose happiness. Patterns are just certain things that we see coming up in our lives over and over again. Think about the relationship you're currently in or just were in recently. If you, and if you haven't been in a relationship, think of a friendship. But it's easier sometimes to think about romantic relationships. My guess is each relationship that you've had has a very specific pattern that we could break down together. Now that pattern could be meet somebody and then ends up being the wrong guy. He ends up being an alcoholic or a drug addict or abusive or maybe just lazy or doesn't like the outdoors or whatever it is. You find that person, you don't find out till months later and you're just in too deep. Let me give you a very specific example of a client I was just talking to. This individual, successful businessman, and he was just having so much problem in his relationships and he was so down. He was telling me, he's just, ah, oh, I just don't get it. I'm just, I'm getting so jealous. Uh, you know, this girl that I love, I just love her so much, Doug. And what happens is I get so jealous of her and then I'm just scared she's gonna leave me. This woman, you know, was very open with her friendships with other people. She was, you know, in his eyes, flirtatious. What he wasn't getting is this pattern he was in. But when I walked it through for him, he went, oh my God. You know, this is something I've been doing my whole life. Hey, these patterns, we all have them. I have my patterns and you have yours. And most of us started forming these patterns as protection mechanisms so we could socialize in the environments that we we're in. And so we've been doing these patterns in some way, shape or form since we were really little. One of the keys I see to breaking these patterns, and this happens nine times out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10, is spend time filling you first. Fill your cup. And many of us just don't even know what that means. So today, what I'm gonna ask you for your homework is sit down in your journal and write what makes you happy. If you haven't been happy in a long time, first, I'm sorry, and you really need to get in our community and, and jump on board and maybe work with one of our coaches uh, to get you on that, that track, but hopefully you have. And hopefully you can see those things that really fill you up. And maybe if you're having a hard time, maybe you've been married for many years and the relationship's kind of gone dead and you, instead of having a, a marriage, you got a roommate, right? Or somebody else. Uh, about what you did when they first met. What were those things that filled you up then? Chances are they're very similar. And chances are the things that filled you up as a child are very, very similar to things that fill you up today. So what is it like to be in relationship with me? That's kind of an odd question, but it's a question that I sent to five key people in my life. I sent it to my wife, uh, my, one of my brothers, uh, and one of my coworkers, as well as two friends. Now I sent this in an email, and I also followed up with each person just so they knew where I was coming from. And in the email, I started off with, hey, I have a question for you because I'm on a path of personal growth. And I really would like you to take a few moments to answer this question. What is it like to be in relationship with me? Now, I also told them, please be transparent and honest. I'm not gonna hold any of this against you. This is for my growth. And actually the more open and honest you are with me, the better this is gonna be for me. The results that I got back, frankly, actually surprised me. Um, and surprised me in a couple different ways. Uh, one is I was really taken back by all the great things people had to say about me. For some reason, I was really focused on the negative. I was thinking of all the things that it could be like to be in a relationship with me. I run multiple businesses, I'm a little spastic, but the results that I got were really heartwarming. You know, people said often, uh, they commented about my integrity, my loyalty, um, that I had their back, that I loved them and would always look out for them before myself, and they knew I would always be there for them and have their best interest in mind. 
That really touched me. That's the way that I want to live, but you know, you don't always know if people see that. But I also got some criticism. The biggest critique for me was my moodiness. I run multiple businesses, and so sometimes I'm up late at night just thinking about ideas or, or what have you, and I don't sleep that well, and I get into the stress of the day, and I don't manage it as well as I could, and I tend to take it out on those people that are closest to me. Does that sound familiar to you? Probably. A lot of us do that. And it's something that I've been working on. Uh, and which was also cool because my wife told me, hey, this is where you were when I met you, and now here's where you are. So this is what it was like to be in relationship with you at this time of our, of our relationship, and this is what it's like to be in relationship with you now. Good and bad. That was really eye-opening for me as well, and it was really heartwarming that she took the time to actually write that out there. What I'm gonna ask you to do today, your call to action is to do the same thing. Pick five people that you're close to in your life, family, friends, coworkers, that's up to you. But pick at least five people and ask them that question. What is it like to be in relationship with me? Now, of course, that's you in this case. And the more honest people are with you, the more you're actually gonna see your actions and be able to pivot and make a change where you want to. Now, of course, you're perfect just the way you are. You don't have to make any changes but you also can make those micro adjustments where you see fit, just like I'm going to. Have a great day, and remember, share this with at least three people that you know, build your tribe, start the conversation. I'd love to talk to you about it more in the author of your own story group, and that's it for today. Have a great day, and remember, go out and be the author of your own story. I hope you enjoyed today's Daily Growth Hacks. Please put your comments right down below, and remember to click subscribe. This way we can ensure that we're delivering these daily growth hacks right to you each and every day. On behalf of the whole team here, remember, go out and be the author of your own story.